हरे दंडव्रत प्रणाम शिल प्रभुपात की जय गुरु महाराज की जय प्रतिदा श्री श्रम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण प्रीति माता जी दंडव्रत प्रणाम प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माई हम्बल शिल प्रभुपात थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग एंड गिविंग योर एसोसिएशन हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण Hare Krishna Mati ji Dhanvat Pranam Sagrari Shishra Prabhupada and Guru Maharajas and all the assembled Vaishnavas this is Kirti Dasam Vridasi Krishna Mati ji Dhanvat Pranam please accept my humble obeisances all go to Shila Prabhupada and Gurudev thank you so much Mati ji for joining and giving your association Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Mati ji Dhanvat Pranam Sagrari Shishra Prabhupada Hare Krishna Vinita Gandharika Mataji Dhanavat Pranam please accept my humble obeisances all goes to Shila Prabhupada and Gurudev thank you so much Mataji for joining and giving your association Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Mataji Dhanavat Pranam please accept my humble obeisances any other devotees who would like to introduce themselves Mataji, shall we start recording? I think Prabhu Ji is already in the call, or we'll wait for two minutes. I request any other devotees, if you would like to introduce yourself, you can please go ahead. We have two minutes time. sorry prabhu ji to making you wait we'll just wait for 2 minutes we'll start at 11 o'clock prabhu ji Mataji, your voice was breaking. Shall I start? Yes, Mataji, I think so. You can start now. I welcome each and every one once again for the Bhakti Kumar Japa Conference Call. Today we are very fortunate to have His Grace Jayanand Gauranga Das Prabhu Ji to enlighten us on the topic Sri Chaitanya Charita Amritam Antalila twenty point seventy two onwards. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, then what can I please accept our humble obeisance? All goes to Shri Lal Prabhu Padan Guru Dev. Thank you so much, Prabhu Ji, for your very valuable time and association to us. I would like to hand over the call to you, Hare Krishna. Hello. 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 ज्ञानांजन शलाघया चक्षुमीलित तस्म श्रीगुर नम श्रीचैतमनोभ स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं कदाह ददाती स्वदाक वंदे अहम श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकम श्रीगुरोन् वैष्णवाश्चूप सागर जात सहगन रघुनाथा तम सजीव साध्वैत सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सहगन ललित श्री विशाखा विता 
नमो ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते जय पतक स्वामी नामिने नमाचार्य पादाय निधाय कृप प्रदाय गौरकथा धामदाय नगर ग्राम तारिणे नमो ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यादेशतारिणी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गधाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so um we are almost in the last uh, phase of this uh, chaitanya charitamrita this is the last chapter as well and it's almost ending and in fact every one of these verses talk about the end of uh, sri chaitanya charitamrita so this is verse number 72 yata cheshtha yata pralapa nahi prarha vara There is no limit to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's activities and his words of madness. Therefore, describing them all would be greatly would greatly increase the size of this book. I'm going to do a few more verses. Um, we'll read the translation. Whatever pastimes Sri La Brindavan Das Thakur has first described. I have merely summarized. I have only very briefly described the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not described by Vrindavan Das Thakur. Nevertheless, because those transcendental pastimes are so numerous, the size of this book is increased. It is impossible to describe all the pastimes elaborately. I shall therefore end this description and offer them my respectful obeisances. What I have described. gives merely an indication but following this indication one may obtain a taste of all the pastimes of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu i cannot understand the very deep meaningful pastimes of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu my intelligence cannot penetrate them and therefore i could not properly describe them after offering my respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of all my vaishnava readers i shall therefore end this description of the characteristics of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu so we'll stop with that so in this um verse and uh the uh, subsequent verses that we are talking here there is an elaborate uh description of uh there is a description of uh, vrindavan das thakur and so the book that has been referred here so i'm just going to briefly go over uh the different biographies of uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu there are many and let's take a look at each of them and see at what angle in which um how they approach the the past times of chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya bhagavata i think it was written somewhere around 1540 or something like that it was initially called chaitanya mangala and then it is uh, written as we all know and is referred to in this verse it's uh, written by shrila brindavan das thakur it uh, it's very it it uh, carries a pattern which is like chaitanya charitamrita the adi it's called as adi khanda adhya khanda antya khanda so that's how it's divided the adi khanda is contains 16 chapters it starts from the appearance of chaitanya mahaprabhu the reason for his appearance his uh, initial education okay the activities with uh, keshava kashmiri and then his uh, marriage and then his and then he talks about his travel to gaya and then meeting ishwar puri maharaj at gaya and then his initiation at gaya that's where the first 16 so it heavily emphasizes the initial past times in navadweep the madhya kanda is the in between portion which contains 27 chapters and it contains about many of the esoteric activities of mahaprabhu his uh, um external 
uh, symptoms and then uh, the bhava that he exhibited about his disciples, who all came, how did they get started about his associates, and then uh, the incidents of Jagai, Madai, and then there is elaborate description about uh, Chand Kazi. And it runs, uh, um, even the Kesho Kashmiri chapter, um, you know, it's very elaborate, it talks about the verse, it talks about what were the conversations between uh, Saraswati Devi and um, Keshava Kashmiri and how, how, how his change was, change was uh, uh, perceived and then the civil disobedience movement with uh, starting the first uh, Krishna Nagar Sankirtan, Krishna Sankirtan movement, which was, uh, which, which headed towards the palace of uh, Chand Kazi. And uh, with that, there are 27 chapters. It's way more elaborate in all these things than Chaitanya Charitamrita. And it's very descriptive. It's very descriptive in terms of the uh, activities. And then Antyakhanda, which contains the 10 chapters. It starts with uh, Khartwa, the acceptance of sannyas, Sanyasa, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entering the renounced order, the lamentation of Sachi Mata. It talks about the travel to Puri, Jagannath, Jagannath Temple, and then uh, the deliverance of Sarvabhava Bhattacharya, and a little about what he did in Jagannath Puri, but then it just stops there. So wherever Chaitanya Bhagavata ends, pretty much Chaitanya Charitamrita starts there because Chaitanya Charitamrita does not do much about the initial pastimes, which are much elaborately covered in Chaitanya Bhagavata. And, uh, and then he's... Uh, Comparing uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami of Chaitanya Charitamrita, he compares Chaitanya Vrindavan Das Thakur to uh, Bhyasa Deva. And hence, he also had the appropriate name here as Sri Chaitanya Bhagavata. And um, uh, being, um, educate, being um, guided by uh, none other than Lord Nityananda himself, it's a very elaborate uh, book. I think it, it's almost twice the size of Chaitanya Charitamrita if you see the number of verses. So let's go to the next um, one. So we are ending with uh, this uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. It was written by uh, Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in the year 1557, uh, based on the orders of uh, the deity of Sri Radha Govinda in Vrindavan. And um, many Vaishnavas had requested Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami to write elaborately the descriptions of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita because uh, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur's uh, biography it covers more of the initial pastimes, but they really wanted to hear more about the, um, the trip of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to South India. They wanted to hear about, um, I just wanted to confirm, you're all able to see the screen. Is that correct? Uh, if somebody- Yes, Prabhuji. So, um, so they wanted to hear from him about the South India trip, more about his trip to the Braja, and uh, his pilgrimage and his latter pastimes. So Chaitanya Charitamrita is uh, heavily written down and copied uh, by the different Vaishnavas and heavily preached in Bengal later by Sri Lan Narodhama Das Thakur and, uh, and then his contemporaries. And then they all made several copies of it. And then it was all transported from Vrindavan to uh, Bengal. And uh, so the Adi, uh, the Adi Leela contains 17 chapters. It contains about the identity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a Supreme Personality of Godhead, none other than the premier, premier personality is Krishna himself and his uh, lineage. And uh, it talks like, uh, what is the lineage of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in terms of his um, acceptance of initiation and so on. His it talks about his some of his childhood pastimes, not a lot, but it talks about, but they're all very relevant. And then his talk, it talks about his devotional associates, like uh, how did everybody come that's called as the branch, the Chaitanya tree, 
which is um, um, you know it's like uh, it's it's called as the bhakti vriksha so the chaitanya tree which contains so many branches which and it talks about each branch like who is the branch and how it in turn expands and then uh, about the fruit bearing tree you know how it how how the tree tree expands so it talks about those it talks about the five expansions of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and then in terms of uh, Nityananda Prabhu, Gadadhar Pandit, and then you have uh, Srivast Thakur, and then Advaita Acharya. And uh, it also talks about um, the, uh, the verse uh, narrated to Keshava Kashmiri, Mahatvam Gangayam, and then that verse ending with uh, Bhavani Bartuhu, Shirasad Adbhuta. Vibhavat Adbhuta Gunaha. So it talks elaborately about the verse and Mahaprabhu pointing the faults and the merits of the verse. And then it talks about the Chant Kazi pastime. And then not as elaborate as that in Chaitanya Bhagavata. Chaitanya Bhagavata gives a very beautiful description. If somebody has not read it, I would seriously uh, recommend that you please read the Chant Kazi description in Chaitanya Bhagavata. It is so wonderful to read. And it gives some amazing activities as to uh, in, in terms of the details that are there with respect to that uh, Nagar Sankirtan. It is um, really very, very inspiring. And it talks about all the pastimes elaborated. Uh, it also talks about towards the end of the Adi Lila. It also takes a chapter from um, a pastime that's actually narrated in the Madhya Lila. It comes much after that, the one with Prakasha and the Saraswati in Varanasi. And it actually takes about, it takes that pastime and uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is so worried that because he, he wrote this in his latter day, uh, days of life and therefore he was very worried that he would not be able to complete the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, but he did not want this book to go without this pastime. And, the, and so he, the philosophical aspects of the path of the active of the conversation with Prakash and the Saraswati actually appears in the Adi Lila, which is not very chronological. So Chaitanya Charitamrita is very chronological, but in some cases it is not very chronological because uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami was very concerned whether he would be able to cover those pastimes later. And so he covered it in the Adi Lila itself. So, um, and that comes towards the end of the Adi Lila. The uh, Madhya Lila is the largest uh, part of uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Adi Lila is, of course, the smallest. The Madhya Lila is 25 chapters. It, it starts with the acceptance of sannyasa, but all that is more elaborately described in the Chaitanya Bhagavata. So, therefore, it is not that elaborate here, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. But it does talk about the acceptance of sannyasa and the feelings, and uh, Nimai Sannyasa is a very, very elaborate uh, drama that has been enacted for many, many years, and it's very touching. And uh, this, um, after the Nimai Sanyasa, he goes to, uh, it talks about uh, how the, the activities of Mahaprabhu and how he crossed the river Ganga, and then he thought it was Yamuna, and then how he was tricked and brought to Advaita Acharya's house. And then it talks about um, uh, the, uh, the cooking of Sri uh, Sachi Mata in Advaita Acharya's house and how Mahaprabhu accepted that in spite of uh, being him being in the Sanyasha Ashrama. And then uh, but based on his mother's advice, he did not go to Vrindavan, but he went to uh, Jagannath Puri. And there it talks about, uh, on the way, it talks about a number of uh, temples that they were, they met like Haridas Thakur, Jagadan, the Pandit, all, they all went along, Nityan, the Prabhu, they all went along with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So on his way there, it talks about how uh, they went to uh, the temples on the way, the Sakshi Gopal temple and so on. And then um, it also talks about uh, Madhavendra Puri's life and how he, uh, how the Lord himself uh, stole the, um, 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 the Amrit Keli for Madhavendra Puri and it talks about those uh, Kshira Chora Gopinath. It uh, talks about those temples and then on his way to Jagannath Puri. And then it talks about how he Lord received uh, the visit to Jagannath temple and the philosophical conversation with Sarvabhava Bhattacharya where uh, with elaborate description of the Atmarama verse and uh, Mahaprabhu uh, giving an explanation of that uh, from 64 perspectives and later with uh, he again gave 64 meanings to the um, um, to Sanatana Goswami later but then without even touching those 64 uh, verses that he actually gave to Sarubhoma Bhattacharya 
And then it talks about his pilgrimage to the South, in to South India. It talks about the different uh, temples that he visited on the, on the course. He went to Kanchi and uh, different places to the Southern Mathura uh, called Madurai. And then he went to Rameshwaram and then to, um, he went to Udupi, uh, passing through uh, Kerala, and then uh, how he then came to Pandarpur, where his older brother, Vishwarupa, he was there. And then he, I mean, he had uh, left his body at the time, before that time. So, and then he, and then it talks about uh, his return and getting the scriptures called Brahma Samhita. And... Um, also a very nice book called as Krishna Karnamritha written by Vilva Mangala Thakur on his way. And um, um, so one of those books was uh, ob obtained in a temple of the Lord Janardana. And uh, this is this temple is in Kerala and uh, it's a little north of uh, the present day uh, Trivandrum or Trivanantapuram. And uh, <clears throat> so that's where one of these uh, scriptures was obtained. The author scripture was uh, the Brahma Samhita was obtained in uh, it's uh, right now I think in Tamil Nadu but then uh, it's a very beautiful temple that the Brahma Samhita was obtained in the um, it's a uh, it's a uh, um, um, uh, Vishnu reclining on the Adi Keshava temple there where Vishnu is reclining and it's very very beautiful gorgeous temple there and um, I think a lot of maintenance is even being done by Iskon right now in the temple and then it's a Sri Vaishnava temple and uh, one of their 108 uh, Vaishnava Divya uh, Deshams. And then here, um, and then it also talks about the observance of the different festivities at uh, Jagannath Puri. And on the way, it talks about the discussions with Ramananda Raya and uh, how the exalted conversations and the return of uh, Ramananda Raya back to uh, Jagannath Puri. It talks about... <clears throat> Instructions to it then talks about his uh, travel to Vrindavan, and uh, on the way uh, it talks about uh, his uh, stopping at the um, and giving instructions to Rupa Goswami, and then on his return there is uh, conversations with um, uh, Sanatana Goswami at uh, uh, both in um, uh, Prayag and in Varanasi respectively. And then um, it talks about the act conversations with Prakashananda Saraswati. So with Prakashananda Saraswati, who was the head of the, the, the Advaitans there, the Shankara Mutt, which is there in Kashi, and how Mahaprabhu uh, had a profound impact on the Mayavadi sannyasis there and, his, um, and their conversion to Vaishnavism. <coughs> and then um, the Antya Leela, which is also quite big and it has about 20 chapters not as big as the Madhya Leela in terms of the act, number of activities because Anti Leela has all these Adi Leela, Madhya Leela, Anti Leela they're all very distinct in terms of their uh, activity so the Adi Leela talks about activities from a different perspective the Madhya Leela is a lot of it is pilgrimage the Anti Leela is uh, a lot of it is very intimate pastimes with his associates and a little more esoteric and at um, uh, uh, at uh, a different level. Therefore, uh, Madhya Leela is more of a preaching uh, uh, activities, but Anti Leela is uh, very uh, intimate and uh, a lot of it is very intimate pastimes with his associates. And uh, his interactions with Krishna in, uh, is very elaborate, is quite elaborate in Anti Leela and his uh, moods and the Mahabhava exhibited and everything. So interactions, so there are also some occasional critics. Uh, there was somebody um, called Ramachandra and they all came and they had some occasional and uh, how Mahaprabhu interacted with them. Even the uh, other, uh, you know, the other lineage, there was also Vallabha, Vallabhacharya. So even he came and um, to Mahaprabhu and accepted his advice and also took initiation from Gadadhara Pandit. And then there were uh, um, some elaborate conversations with Raghunath Das Goswami. And then Mahaprabhu personally signs the, the books written by Rupa Goswami, the, the dramas uh, called the Lalitha Madhva and Vidagdha Madhva. And then it contains uh, uh, a chapter or so on uh, his activities with Jagadhan the Pandit. 
and um, and the activities of Jagannath Pandit, which are very very amusing and very nice to read, and and shows his uh, the differences in his activities compared to the, uh, the different devotees, different associates, and his Swarupa uh, Dhamudar with uh, Raghunath, and then um, and then it ends with the Lord's uh, increasing agony of uh, separation. Uh, from Krishna and how he in turn, um, how he, he in turn um, exhibits those pastimes in Krishna Viraha and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, of course, ends with the, the eight uh, prayers uh, called as the Shikshashtaka, which uh, gives the sum and substance of what we need to be doing. So, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita was. Um, a very heavily is a most well read and popularized and uh, heavily enjoyed by the the Gaudi Vaishnavas historically and uh, it has been pretty much translated by every Gaudi Vaishnava Acharya including Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and then in the same lineage we have this amazing our amazing puppets by Prabhupada. So let's go to the next one. This is the Sri Chaitanya Mangala. Even though this is not mentioned, of course, in, in Chaitanya Charitam Mritha. So there is a small mistake here in this verse. Uh, this uh, first uh, line should actually read uh, written by Sri Lochanadas Thakur. So please forgive my mistake here, uh, some error here. It is written by Sri Lochanadas Thakur. Okay, and uh, this is in turn, the rest is correct. The first sentence is wrong here. It's again divided into four khandas. One is called the Sutra Khanda. Okay, and the, then which contains uh, 1,800 verses. And uh, it's a prelude to Krishna's appearance as Lord Dharanga in Navadvi. And why in turn he appeared, the instructions of Narada Muni and why the why Narada Muni really wanted this and the events that led to, lead to the appearance of uh, Lord Chaitanya. The Adi Khanda, it contains 3,300 verses, and this is again written in Bengali. And then uh, early pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu up to his trip to Gaya. So it's, uh, that is in the Adi Khanda. The Madhya Khanda is, of course, the largest, which contains 4,300 verses. After Gaya, it talks, it talks about all the way up to his sannyasa and accepting and his deliverance of Sri Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. Shesha Kanta gives his uh, a brief uh, anecdote of all his uh, pilgrimage to both Southern and the Northern India, both to uh, the temples in the South as well as to Brajamanda. But Chaitanya Mangala is not very descriptive in that sense. It is not that chronological in the first place, and it is also not very descriptive in terms of its activities. It's more based on the mellows and the, the different rasas exhibited, and uh, it's, a, it's more esoteric. And out of all these biographies, I would say Chaitanya Mangala is the hardest to read and even understand. And um, it is very poetic, and uh, it it uh, excels in terms of the in terms of the way things are being uh, delivered, and um, it's very Chaitanya Charitamrita is a, is very neutral. Okay, it it has rasa, it has mellows, it has uh, description, it has philo philosophy, the theology, um, and the metaphysics. Everything is there in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Chaitanya Bhagavata has some has the theology, but it is heavily descriptive. But Chaitanya Mangala is um, very esoteric. It's very rasa oriented. If you read the Chaitanya Charitamrita and if you expect that it is going to be very similar to Chaitanya Mangala, Chaitanya, you will be very deceived there because Chaitanya Mangala is very different in terms of the way it approaches it. The rasas and the mellows, uh, the the mellows exhibited there, and how it approaches is very different. Chaitanya Bhagavata. So, but initially Chaitanya Mangala was also called as Chaitanya Bhagavata, and uh, that is why if you see the translations of these verses, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami refers to Chaitanya Bhagavata of Vrindavan Das Thakur as Chaitanya Mangala. Okay, so when Chaitanya Bhagavata was written, it was written as Chaitanya Mangala, but then uh, then we find there is the devotees found there is another book written by Sri Lochanadas Thakur, also as Sri Chaitanya Bha Mangala. So all the leading Vaishnavas of Vrindavan, so Raghunath Das Goswami, Jiva Goswami, and then Kashishwar Pandit, Pandit Haridas Goswami, and Anantacharya, they all 
joined together, they came to a meeting in Vrindavan to solve this problem. And then they renamed Chaitanya Mangala uh, or written by Srila Vrindavanadas Thakur as Chaitanya Bhagavata. So that's why if you see this, it's written as Chaitanya Bhagavata, but it is initially called Chaitanya Mangala. But then the leading Vaishnavas of Vrindavan, they renamed this Chaitanya Mangala as Chaitanya Bhagavata. Again, I apologize for this, that uh, this should be written as Srila Lochanadas Thakur, okay, who is uh, who wrote this book on Chaitanya Mangala. Okay, and there is actually a very nice book actually written by I think uh, His Holiness Mahanidhi Swami, and uh, it talks very nice, it gives a beautiful uh, translation of Sri Chaitanya Mangala. And um, the next biography we will briefly visit is called as Sri Krishna Chaitanya Charita Mahakavya. So Krishna Chaitanya Charita Mahakavya is written by Sri Murari Gupta. This is the earliest biography because this was uh, written just immediately after the disappearance of Mahaprabhu and Murari Gupta was um, a personal associate of Mahaprabhu. He was there, he was a contemporary. Mah Mahaprabhu was extensively interacted with him and so he had personal knowledge and uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita was written more from the dairies, the 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 the, the, uh, the notebooks written by so both by Sri Raghunath Das Goswami and Swarupa Dhamudar. So it was taken from the notes, and then it was written as Chaitanya Chaitanya Charitamrita. But Chaitanya Krishna Chaitanya Charita, uh, Charita Mahakavya is uh, written by a contemporary who directly associated with Mahaprabhu, and all the biographies pretty much base it on this. Uh, Tritha is called as uh, Chaitanya Charita Mahakavya. Sometimes it's called as just as Chaitanya Charita Mahakavya, and sometimes it's called as Krishna Chaitanya Charita Mahakavya. <coughs> Excuse me. It's the <coughs> earliest biography available, and it's written in Sanskrit. Unlike the other biographies written in, uh, in uh, Bengali, this is written in Sanskrit. It has four books in it. The first book talks about appearance till the return of Mahaprabhu from Gaya. The second book is about the ecstatic moods and um, uh, of Mahaprabhu, and it ends with the acceptance of sannyasa. So, and then the third book again talks about the acceptance of sannyasa, and then it goes all the way to the Jagannath Puri pastimes. The last book is uh, predominantly about the Braja pastimes and the later pastimes of Mahaprabhu at uh, Puri. Yes, uh, give me one second. So, um, so this is, um, so these are, um, and uh, um, Murari, Sri Murari Gupta is, was a physician uh, and, uh, and it is very popularly said that he not only cured the material diseases because of the bodily diseases, but also he cured the spiritual diseases. And it's uh, both Chaitanya Bhagavata, Chaitanya Bhagavata was heavily inspired of Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur, was also heavily inspired from Krishna Chaitanya Maha, uh, Charita Mahakavya. And also the Chaitanya Mangala written by Sri Lochana Das Thakur was in turn inspired by this Krishna Chaitanya Charita Mahakavya. So again, it, this one also is not very chronological in that sense, but then it gives the essence, but all of them are very unanimous in the fact that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a supreme personality of Godhead. That is unanimous. There might be some differences in terms of the um, uh, very small descriptions of the pastimes because every devotee sees that from their angle and then describes. But the essence is all the same in all these biographies. But then the number of biographies that are available shows that the intense affection that the devotees uh, had for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and how they in turn wanted to uh, describe, okay, they describe the activities of Mahaprabhu um, and um, so that's very, very clear. The next biography, which is there, it's not that much of a biography. It's more of a description of some of the activities of Mahaprabhu. And this is called as Chaitanya Chandramrita. And this was written by Srila Prabhodananda Saraswati Thakur. And it is written in Sanskrit again. It contains 12 chapters and it contains some very intimate uh, mellows and rasas. So Prabhodananda Saraswati uh, Thakur, 
was uh, in the Sri Rangam temple and he was uh, the uncle of the one of the Goswamis, Gopala Bhatta Goswami. And when uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Sri Rangam temple, he noted some of the amazing activities and the mellows exhibited by Mahaprabhu, which are all... Um, uh, which are all recorded in this scripture called as the Chaitanya Chanta, Chandramrita. And uh, I've given some verses here, which tell, which tell some of the ways by which the devotees, when Mahaprabhu traveled to the south, it tells how the devotees viewed Mahaprabhu and how his activities were. So one of the verses here, it says, Ananda Lila Maya Vigrahaya. It's a very famous, famous verse, actually. Hema Badivya Chavisundaraya. That's my Mahaprema Rasa Pradaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste. So Ananda Leela. So Ananda Leela means full of blissful pastimes. Ananda Leela Maya. So full of blissful pastimes. Vigrahaya. So if a Vigra is a person, it's like a personality. So if you make a person full of blissful pastimes, and that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hema means golden. Hema with Debya. It's just not material gold, but Debya means transcendental gold. So if the transcendental gold is just put, okay, so that is Hema with Debya, Chavi Sundaraya. So all this amazing Sundaraya is beautiful. So very beautiful. Hema with Debya, transcendental gold, because Mahaprabhu is so golden in, um, in, its, in his appearance. So he's called Hema with Debya, Chavi Sundaraya. That's my. Maha Prema Rasa Pradaya. So, and he was distributing his own amazing Krishna Prema, Maha Pradaya, Rasa Pradaya, that mellow of Krishna, Maha Prema Rasa, or the mellow of Krishna, Krishna's love. He was freely distributing it. Chaitanya Chandraya, Namo Namaste. Unto that moon like Chaitanya, he offers his humble obeisances. I pulled another verse just for example here to show the kind of mellows that are there in Chaitanya Chandamata. Samsara Sindhu. Sindhu means ocean. Samsara is material existence. So if you want Tarani means to cross. So if you want to cross the ocean of material existence and Hridayam, uh, if your heart is uh, uh, willing to cross the ocean of material existence, Sankirta Namrata Rase Ramathe Manas Cheta. If your mind, Manas, as if your mind is wishing to Float, Ramate means to enjoy in the rasa of the nectarian. Amrita is nectar in the nectarian Krishna Sankirtan. Okay, so if your heart is willing to uh, cross the ocean of material existence, and if your mind is willing to uh, enjoy the rasa of uh, the nectarian Krishna Sankirtan, Premambudu Biharane Yadi Chitta Vritti. If your consciousness, Chitta is consciousness is uh, willing to uh, reside, Viharani uh, is reside in Prema Ambudo, in the ocean of Krishna Prema. Okay, Ambuda is ocean. And the ocean of Krishna Prema, Chaitanya Chandra Charanam Sharanam Prayathu. So, and to the moon like Chaitanya's lotus feet, Charanam Sharanam. So, okay, Sharanam Prayathu, please, uh, please pay obeisances unto the lotus feet, okay, of uh, surrender unto the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Chandra. So, this is, so you can see that uh, in this Chaitanya Chandra Amrita, it talks about the exquisite beauty and activities and the pastimes, the mellows that are being exhibited by Sri Chaitanya, Ch uh, by Sri Chaitanya Chandra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And how it was received, it is not that big in size, actually. It's the smallest of the lot, but it but it talks about the past, the, the mellows that are exhibited in Chaitanya Chandramita is very distinctly different from those exhibited uh, exhibited in the others like Chaitanya Mangala, Bhagavata, and Chaitanya Chattamrita. But uh, in essence, all of them are unanimous in their description of Mahaprabhu as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as the primordial personality as Krishna, not just as some incarnation, as not just as some avatar, but as the original personality of Godhead descending directly from Vraja uh, um, Gokul. So that is about Sri Chaitanya. Chandramita. Let's go to the next one. This is the Chaitanya Chandrodaya. Chandrodaya. This is a drama. Okay, this is a play act. It was written by Srila Kavikarnapura. Kavikarnapura was one of the sons of uh, Shivananda Sen. He had three sons, and one of them is the Kavikarnapura, and who has written some very very nice thing. He has given the identities of all the 
uh, associates of Mahaprabhu as it occurs in Krishna Leela in one particular scripture. In another scripture, he has written this beautiful <clears throat> drama, which uh, contains the activity. This is also a biography of Mahaprabhu, but more in the form of a drama. So it contains play acts. The first act is an introduction of how Mahaprabhu appeared. The second is gives about all the appearances, incarnations. The third is about it is called as Danakeli uh, pastimes. It talks about the activities of the Radha Krishna pastimes act uh, in Act Three. The Act Four talks about acceptance of sannyasa. Act Five, when Mahaprabhu after sannyasa he goes to Advaita Acharya's house and the drama that occurs there with Sachi Mata and the food and the elaborate food preparation that happens there and what Mahaprabhu does, what Nityananda Prabhu does, that is in Act Five. Act Six about is the deliverance of Sarabhama Bhattacharya in Jagannath Puri. Act seven talks about the journey to the holy places. Okay, act eight is about the deliverance of King Prataparudra. Act nine talks about the journey to uh, Vraja, Mathura, specifically. And then act 10 is the trip of uh, Shivan and the Sain uh, to Jagannath Puri and uh, some of the things that happened there. It's very, uh, very uh, humorous also in some situations and very nice to read. And so this is also, this is a very nice book and they used heavily for play and acting. And uh, this is uh, called as Sri Chaitanya Chandrahodaya Nataka. And um, so with this, um, uh, so the reason why we discussed about all these things is because here Chaitanya Charitamrita is ending and uh, Chaitanya uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is talking about one of the biographies which precedes which Ch Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami had, which is the Chaitanya Bhagavata. But here it talks about all the different biographies. And there are a few more actually, which are not, which are more, um, few, a few more actually, but these are the main and heavily, uh, um, heavily, um, um, appreciated and enjoyed by the Gaudiya Vaishnava. So we are now going to talk about uh, Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami also tells in these verses, like how it is so hard for, uh, for even a personality like him to describe about the activities of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because it is so super mundane in nature. So we'll briefly talk about it. So uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami actually says here about this in these verses, that one must actually perceive all these things as the transcendental significance. Okay, they have they all have a transcendental significance because one cannot perceive Krishna in just some mundane literature. Okay, as long as one is attached to the bodily concept of life and is very interested only in enjoying the senses, that person will never be able to grasp the spiritual truth. So that means the sum and substances you let go the material desires, then it is simultaneously as you're grasping Krishna. Both have to happen simultaneously. As long as one keeps holding to material desires, to that level, the, the spiritual truth is hard to grasp. So the spiritual master, um, you know, out of his costless mercy helps with this, you know, but the spiritual love of Krishna is untainted. And it is and it is said, the Tsvarupa Dhamudar, who is a personal associate of Mahaprabhu, says, says, says that it is like the sacred waters of the river Ganga, and that love is like an unlimited ocean of nectar. And the devotee's spiritual attachment for such loving relationship is actually totally free from even the slightest material contamination. Okay, so it's like a spotless cloth and it is uh, without any contamination. And that's how this pure love of Godhead is. It's like an ocean of bliss. And if one could just have even one drop from that ocean, that would inundate the entire universe. And one should feel so bad that one is not 100% attached, that is one is 100% attached to the material body and uh, controlled by the material desires that the that one cannot be in the original form of the spirit okay is not being manifest and so one should be very feel really bad about this when one is blinded by this material desire and he rejects this pure spiritual love for lord krishna in fact it won't even awake because of this deceitful approach if one has mundane desires in mind and one if approaches krishna it is very deceitful and, uh, but then if one is very earnest and sincere and he implores Krishna uh, for his mercy, then that person will be crowned with success according to Sri Swarupa Dhamodar and as elaborated later by Jagadananda Pandit. So the spiritual exchanges and emotions that one experiences, okay, they, um, 
Um, so uh, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu experience, they're all of supra mundane in nature, and it's very hard to fathom. So they're always experienced, such emotions are always experienced in the platform between Krishna and the pure spiritual beings, the pure spiritual beings. So, and um, uh, therefore, but at the same time, one should also not impose mundane um uh qualities mundane concepts on these spiritual exchanges between krishna and his devotees it's best just not even to read them uh if one cannot if one is just imposing such mundane concepts on them that is why bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur even he wrote a commentary of jayadeva goswami's uh, gita govinda i think he just made like one copy or something and just kept it because it was not like because people were just going to put mundane concepts onto such exalted literature which is just beyond uh mundane conception and therefore by the lord's mercy alone one can be purified to even understand these transcendental mellows of lord chaitanya so at that time one would reject all other sentiments and emotions and they will completely surrender and su surrender themselves to lord krishna so um so as long as one is engrossed in the pleasures of the material world, it is impossible to transcend the loving and even understand the loving exchanges okay, of uh, uh, Krishna that one cannot even hear, that one cannot hear the beautiful flute sound that can evoke ecstatic emotions and spiritual sentiments. Um, and as long as one is not able to hear it, that person need to be considered as unfortunate. So uh, be considered as un unfortunate and therefore, um uh so so that is what is uh written here in this um uh, in these verses that's what uh, sri chaitra krishna das kaviraj goswami he tells the mood that one needs to be having as one receives at, Chaitanya Charitamrita and as Chaitanya Charitamrita is ending. So at this, so in this mood, okay, so if one reads this Chaitanya Charitamrita, you know, one can swiftly return to their once eternal home in the forest of Goloka and uh, dissociating oneself from the material body and uh, the previous identity and any material association. So when gradually one develops this mood of the gopis, and begins to recollect the original identity in the spiritual world and cuts loose all the material attachment. And then Krishna becomes the sole object of love for that spiritual body. And the repos and Krishna is the repository of all that love. So he approaches, so this in the spiritual being as our, our self, we can approach, uh, we approach through an intermediary, intermediary who's a guru who constantly reminds us of the love for the beloved Krishna. And in this way, um, uh, one is able to uh, focus their attention to um, focus their attention back to Krishna. So with that, this is my last slide. This is another thing which is being said in this verse and it's about humility. It shows about the humility that Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has. And uh, Trinanda Pisoni Chen has very, very widely to us, uh, cited thing about how one needs to be humble for progress in Krishna consciousness. What does humility do? What is humility? Humility is not to be very anxious, okay, to have the satisfaction of being honored by others, whether somebody honors or not, okay, so one is not very anxious to receive this uh, honor from others. And uh, if one practices humility, the one of the first things that we get from that is freedom from craving for external honor. Okay, so whether somebody respects us or not, it doesn't matter. It gives us that freedom, and it also empowers us in some some ways. It empowers us to act for our and everyone's long term good. So humility is needed for us to even work for our own good. Okay, if we are not taking humility, that means that we are not actually acting for our own good in the first place. And then uh, Srila Prabhupada himself is an epitome of humility. You know, he was um, 
uh, Prabhupada, the manner in which uh, Prabhupada exhibited the opulence of modesty and humility is actually beyond compare. So in spite of being the spiritual master for a uh, whole world, the, he was a confidential associate of the Supreme Lord Krishna, a greatest personality on the surface of the earth. Okay, he was considered as a commander in chief of Lord Chaitanya's army. But Sri Prabhupada showed uh, uh, how humble as pure spiritual master can be, even though, um, uh, and as an Acharya, Prabhupada taught, so this is called as an Acharya, he taught by his own example. And um, um, and this allows us being humble. So Prabhupada himself personally mentioned that the symptoms of devotees, there are two important symptoms. One is called meekness and one is humility. Okay, being meek and humble. And this allows us to actually chant the names of Krishna incessantly. And uh, one another thing I just want to point out before I end this uh, conversation, we'll open up this for discussion, is humility actually goes very hand in hand with tolerance, okay, because uh, tolerance requ uh, is uh, very critical, and it goes, they are like two, uh, when one has two arms, okay, one arm is the uh, humility and the other arm is tolerance, because the material life is full of suffering, and every time uh, things don't go a lot of times things don't go the way we think and uh, it goes sometimes it goes very badly and uh, how to be tolerant in all those circumstances completely depending on krishna and that at the end of the day all that is meant for one's um, growth spiritual growth and it has been personally orchestrated by uh, krishna i mean but even though the devotees always take that as uh, suffering their own uh, uh, fruits from the previous lifetimes, okay, karma from all the previous lifetimes, which are crucifying now, but still Krishna is keeping a close watch on those things, and um, one uh, and they take it in such a way that uh, one probably should be suffering a lot more, but it has already been substantially reduced by the mercy of Krishna, and uh, so that is tolerance. So with uh, so in Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami here talks about this humility in these verses. So with this, there is only like a very few verses left in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. So it's almost to the end, and it is uh, it has been a really great opportunity to talk towards the line, the last chapter of Sri Chait Chaitanya Charitamrita. I really appreciate you uh, the the leadership of this group inviting me. So thank you so much and. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you so much for such a detailed explanation of each and every book, Prabhuji. We are so thankful to you. Explaining about like detailed explanation about Chaitanya Charitamritam, Chaitanya Mangala, Krishna Chaitanya Charitamrita, Mahakavya, and Chaitanya Chindramrita. Chaitanya Chandrodaya. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Gives us some, at least for me, some detailed explanation what books we have to read and uh, how like Vaishnavas will enjoy reading those books. We are so thankful to you, Prabhuji. So, are you, Prabhuji, can you take some questions or realizations from the devotees? Next one, no? 62 times 9. Yes, okay. 62 Hare times Krishna nine. devotees, I request if anybody have any questions or realizations, you can please go ahead. 62 times 9. Mataji, can you hear me, Mataji? Yes, Mataji, we can hear you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you for such a wonderful class and especially uh, covering all the books like what you mentioned. There is just one book that's mentioned, that's spoken about in this chapter and uh, you uh, really give us an opportunity to look at all the different treasures that uh, cover the different pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and you explain what the contents are. Uh, very wonderful class and really grateful for your association and thank you for the slides that helps us to go back and reread also um, what you're talking about. 
So uh, w one question I had was, I mean, uh, all as you said, you were saying that all of them are at uh, like Lochandas Thakur's uh, book is uh, Chaitanya Mangala. That that has a different mellow when compared to uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita or how Chaitanya Bhagavat is written. So um, which are the ones that uh, we really need to go through? Uh, at the stage in our life or oh, here right now. So, um, Mataji, all these books are very, um, they're all, uh, they all need to be read uh, in a, you know, as, as much as um, one wants to know more about Mahaprabhu and his activities. They approach from a different angle and Chaitanya Bhagavata is probably the easiest to read um in terms because it's very descriptive uh, but uh, but um but chaitanya charitamrita is really very sophisticated in its uh, the way it gives its uh, uh gives its explanation so there will be a little uh, adjusting to do when one starts reading chaitanya bhagavata so but after that adjustment because it talks uh, it talks mainly about mahaprabhu from a divine perspective everywhere but chaitanya charitamrita also talks about Mahaprabhu also from how uh, he approached as a uh, sannyasi or how he approached as the devotee talks about, but Chaitanya Bhagavata is heavily from, uh, talks about him uh, working, uh, inter him as the personality of Godhead. Uh, but it's, uh, it's the way it talks is different, but it's very descriptive and it's much easier to read. It's almost twice the size of Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, but it is heavily focused on the Adi Leela. And um, um, uh, so there'll be some adjusting to do, but it'll be the easiest to read. But Chaitanya Mangala is very different. It's, uh, it will be, uh, it, it, the expectations that you might have after reading Chaitanya Charitamrita to read Chaitanya Mangala can be very different because uh, Chaitanya Mangala is, is almost the pastimes are very minimal, but it is so elaborate on the rasa. So it is not that much on. Uh, it just doesn't talk just about activity number one, activity number two. It doesn't go like that. So it talks about his uh, the emotions and the bhava and uh, the the um, the the ex even the external symptoms like how he laughs how he cries how he uh shivers how you know those kind of pastimes are so elaborate so it's very uh different and uh but it's very sweet it's so sweet that i would it, it it i would definitely read it at some point of time because it's very sweet it's very sweet in terms of uh the mellows it exhibits it it's very soothing and um um the love for mahaprabhu is so evident in all these scriptures. That's what you would see, the intense love that they all have. Even the Chaitanya Chandramrita, which is the smallest of the lot of the, it has 12 chapters, but it's very small in size. And it is written in Sanskrit, but you will see the intense love for Mahaprabhu. And that it is not just, and it is it is not just written by, um, um, uh, you know, wherever Mahaprabhu went, how the devotees saw him and how they perceive how his how his uh, ecstatic emotions and symptoms and everything that he exhibited is so visible in them. Chaitanya Chandramrita is easy to read and it is actually very joyful because it talks about how uh, some of the some of the things that it describes are very, very joyful uh, uh, exhibition of Mahaprabhu's um, activities. Chaitanya Chandrodaya is, of course, uh, it's a drama, you know, so that is not, that's a little different from all these biographies. And um, so I would really suggest reading everything, but if you asked for an order, I would start with Chaitanya Bhagavata after Chaitanya Charitamrita because it's the easiest to read, followed by Chaitanya Mangala, which is, um, uh, which will be very different. Uh, if you if, if somebody has read Chaitanya Charitamrita at least five to ten times, it will take a little adjusting to do to read Chaitanya Mangala, but it will be very easy. Once you read Chaitanya Charitamrita, the others will be easier to comprehend and go. But uh, for anybody, Chaitanya Charitamrita is the best to start because Prabhupada has written the translations and uh, it is widely uh, 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 studied. And so Chaitanya Charitamrita is, of course, the the correct place to start as far as Mahaprabhu's pastimes are concerned. So thank you, Madhushi. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Very, very nice answer. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. 
Yeah, even the Anti Rila has been a very difficult journey because of so many of, I mean, it, it, it shows some, at least it, it shows us what Mahaprabhu was experiencing to a certain extent, and it has been quite uh, heavy in that respect, but, but very sweet. It's very, very nectarian, and anyone would automatically develop a, mm, an attachment to uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu hearing this. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanavad Pranams, and glories to Shila Prabhupada. Thank you Prabhu for such a beautiful slide, beautiful presentation, and uh, how your extensive research on different books and their contents. I just have one question. Do any of these books describe, uh, describes the, you know, extensively about how Mahaprabhu winded up his pastimes from this material world, or they just have the vague thing, like nothing is, you know, concrete about it. So none of the authorized biographies uh, say anything about the disappearance of Mahaprabhu. They all stop. No, but they don't want to discuss this, those things. That's uh, it's the uh, uh, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so loved by his associates, and uh, even after hundreds of years. Uh, we are here having a Zoom conference about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here. So nobody really wants to talk about that. It's just uh, there are many popular legends, of course, which talk about how Mahaprabhu disappeared uh, in the um, in the Tota Gopinath temple. Some say in the directly in the Jagannath temple, and uh, how he uh, went into the deity de de there. And the, um, uh, so there are some legends there but none of the biographies say anything. There are some unauthorized biographies. They give their own, um, I'm sad to say that they have the name, which is uh, the first name of mine, which is called Jayananda. There is somebody there uh, with that name actually, but it's not, it's unauthorized. And uh, uh, in fact, in the Chaitanya Mangala, in the four, um, in the introduction page written by His Holiness Mahanidhi Swami, he writes there that the same Chaitanya Mangala was also with the same name, this person called Jayananda also wrote it and uh, how one should not read it. So, uh, but there are, there are- So all these legends, they don't, whatever they are coming up, they don't have any authorized basis, right? There are, it's been, it has been, our, our Vaishnava Acharyas have said that. So it's not mm -hmm. authorized mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. It makes sense, Prabhu. Like uh, just reading what Mahaprabhu went through in his Ante Leela pastime. I'm. I, I think I just got cut off. I just didn't hear anything. You're in mute, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I was just saying, Prabhu, that uh, I do relate to what you said. Because Ante Leela pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was itself so difficult to read because it was so painful. So it's, uh, it's very obvious that how come, you know, his disappearance can ever be described by his intimate associates. So yeah, you rightly said. But thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much for all your uh, association, for all your hard work and that all you have for beautiful slides. So thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. It's also very similar to Krishna's disappearance, Mataji. I have hardly seen people discussing that. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah, so, makes sense, Prabhu. Thank you. Any starting lecture on Krishna's disappearance? Yeah. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare 